Look, when it comes to films, you mustn't be afraid to dig a little deeper. Such is the imagination and craft that goes into movie storytelling these days that watching a film once almost feels like only part of the experience. Obviously, when the film sucks, there's absolutely no incentive to go back and look again, but that can mean missing out on some pretty key details. The greatest magic tricks, especially in filmmaking, are the ones brave enough to show the audience a lot, but in such a creative way they won't even notice. And though Easter egg hunting is such a huge part of the film experience now, even the most well-trained of spotters can somehow fail to see the messages right in front of them. So with that in mind, I'm Will for What Culture, and here are 10 movie secrets everyone missed the first time around. Number 10, The Leaky Cauldron's Secrets, Harry Potter. Despite being family movies, the Harry Potter movies require multiple watches to fully appreciate the world the filmmakers built around J.K. Rowling's books. Consciously focusing away from the main action to drink in the detail in the background, from in-jokes to foreshadowing clues, can often completely change your experience of the films. More importantly, doing that can also answer some pretty pressing questions and offer some strange but compelling revelations, like the reveal that Gilderoy Lockhart is, in fact, bald. One such detail answers how entrances to the magical community are hidden from muggles. In the first movie, as Harry and Hagrid approach the Leaky Cauldron, the sign above the door changes from blacked out to showing the name of the pub when the wizards approach as a security measure, and it's so cleverly hidden that you barely notice it even after multiple viewings. Number 9. The Fight Club Bomb Still Went Off there's obviously a lot going on at the end of Fight Club, not least in terms of the huge twist reveal, but also in the other subtexts, like Marla potentially also being imaginary, so it's not exactly unrealistic that you'd miss some of the more complex details on the first time out, or the tenth time, let's be honest. The big hidden detail in Fight Club completely changes the ending, which of course features Tyler Durden still getting exactly what he wanted when his bombs all go off. And while it does seem that the narrator and Marla are safe, they're also mere moments away from death too, and it's all there in the film. You just have to really look for it. The narrator manages to defuse the car bomb under the building he's in, and we see the timer stop at 25.10. And yet, if you jump back to the start of the movie, the shot of the bomb van shows the timer at 2.45. Jumping back to the end again, and there's another shot of the timer that shows 2.44, confirming it's still counting down, so the diffusing was only temporary. We don't see it going off, but the implication is definitely that Tyler gets his own way 100%. Number 8. John Kramer's Tell, Saw Part of the genius of Jigsaw's original plans were that every victim mostly had the ability and the necessary tools available to escape his traps. It might have changed as the sequels went on, but it was part of what made the original so compelling. You'd notice what you needed to if you just paid enough attention. And even more cleverly, Jigsaw pulled the exact same trick on the audience before the sucker punch of the twist ending revealed that the real murderer was John Kramer, because he told us partway through the movie. When we first meet Kramer in his hospital bed, he's being treated by Dr. Lawrence Gordon and appears to just be a background part of his story. But look closer and on the table in front of him, Kramer has clearly sketched out the horrifying reverse bear trap that might be his most famous. Number 7. No Footprints – Star Wars The Last Jedi Say what you will about Star Wars The Last Jedi, and people frequently do, but the attention to detail the film paints into the galaxy far, far away is astonishing. Costume design, world building, and characters cannot be faulted, no matter how many issues people have suggested the story might well have. Somewhat controversially, the ending sees the newly curmudgeonly Luke Skywalker going full force powers and standing up to Kylo Ren's forces in order to allow the other heroes a chance to escape. Ultimately, it's revealed the Skywalker on show, with his suspiciously young-looking hair, is actually just a projection, and Luke dies from the effort, causing a million fanboy voices to cry out all at once. Cleverly, if you look closely at the scene, which everyone did after the first time, there was a huge clue that Luke wasn't even there. When he and Kylo go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, the latter's feet kick up the red salt of the planet's surface, but Luke leaves no footprints whatsoever, because he has no feet. 
Number six, Marty Jr's TV choices, Back to the Future Part Two. It's become incredibly popular recently for people to suggest that the Lone Pine Mall gag in the first Back to the Future is the cleverest detail in the entire trilogy. This assumption is based on the fact that a whole generation of people seem to have missed it, but it certainly wasn't the case at the time of the film's release or for OG generation fans. It is pretty obvious when you look at it. Considerably less obvious is a detail in the second movie, which has received more more enthusiastic attention in the past few years on account of a certain president rather eerily resembling the dystopian future version of Biff Tannen. In that same hellish future, we meet Marty McFly's family and his son, Marty Jr., who Jennifer sees in their future home. She watches Jr. as he turns on six TV channels at once, and for a brief moment, we get a bit of a hint of his less than wholesome nature. One of the channels he selects shows a commercial for a plastic surgery company called Bottoms Up. Advertising boob jobs called the Super Inflatable TIT and the Headlight TIT. So, yeah, the dude was watching some pretty, um, adult material, apparently. Number 5, M's real name, Skyfall. After Quantum of Solace bored everyone to distraction, Skyfall refocused Daniel Craig's Bond and gave us what would have been a perfect end to the Bond story if it wasn't too much of a solid gold brand. Instead, the ending we got to see was of Judy Dench's M, who is the real focus of the story thanks to her ties to bad guy Silver. After years of building a pretty enigmatic relationship, Bond is forced to watch M die at the end of Skyfall and for for a moment, we get a flash of not only her sense of humor, but also her special bond with Bond. She proved she had a protective instinct towards him earlier in the film, and after her death, we get to see the depth of her affection when she leaves him her bulldog ornament, which Bond hates. It's not just a joke though, the box that the bulldog is presented to him in carries M's biggest gift knowledge. It has her name, her real name, Olivia Mansfield on it, explaining finally what her code name meant after Bond challenged her on it in Casino Royale. Number 4, The Forbidden Snacks, A Quiet Place. Imagine a world where you can't even allow your natural human instincts like crying or a child seeking fun or bodily functions to happen without fear of being killed horribly by monsters. Such is the horror of the excellent A Quiet Place, which kicked off a profound interest in sensory horror stories. There's a delightful little nod to another cost of living in a world where sound is so fundamentally dangerous. At the start of the film, on day 89, we see the family in a grocery store looking for medicine. The store has been almost completely looted, but if you look a little more closely and don't focus on the family, you'll notice that pretty much every bag of potato chips remains on the shelves. Clearly, nobody was hungry enough to risk eating the noisiest of all foods. Simple, awesome world building. Enough said. Number three, the entity is Jay's father. It follows. It Follows is one of the most ingeniously effective horror films in recent years because it took what amounted to a fairly simple concept and squeezed every drop of atmosphere and creepiness and tension out of it. So what amounts to a group of typically dead meat characters being chased by a silent, unstoppable force ended up being incredibly good at scaring the audience. Throughout the film, the it of the title that does the following appears in different forms as it's revealed that it can take on the look of anyone it desires. Its choices are clearly designed for maximum effect, like when it takes on the form of Jay's friend Yara. At the end, the entity takes on its most terrifying form for Jay, and it's so scary she refuses to say what it looks like. The only reason we know who it is and why it's so scary to her is that same man appears briefly in a family portrait. It's Jay's father, which is only confirmed in that one flashing moment. The same is true of the naked man on the roof, who is actually Jay's grandfather, which again is only shown in a brief glimpse at another photograph in Jay's home. Number 2, Harley's Return, Avengers Endgame. Right at the end of Avengers Endgame, you could probably be forgiven for having missed the details involved in Tony Stark's memorial on account of the tears no doubt streaming down your face. It was a moment achieved with great reverence and it felt like the perfect way to say goodbye, with his family and friends memorializing him without too much grandeur. As Tony's first arc reactor is symbolically floated out on the water, the camera pans across all of those left behind and the audience basically gets a who's who of the remaining heroes. And then there's a teenage kid basically no one recognized standing on his own. 
Even after IMDb had announced it a couple of years before the film, it took most people until afterwards to discover the kid was Harley Keener, who had played such a key role in Iron Man 3. He looked nothing like the same child, but it was a great little callback all the same. Number 1. Finkel is Einhorn, Ace Ventura Trust a Jim Carrey movie from the height of his goofball era to do something as crass as use fruit to allude to genitalia. The ending of Ace Ventura Pet Detective has now aged pretty badly because of its myopic suggestion that the idea of a transgender woman kissing a man to be utterly abhorrent to the point of induced vomiting. Still, otherwise a pretty funny film. Anyway, at one point when Ventura is in Lois Einhorn's office, before he realizes that she, in fact, used to be disgraced and dangerous Dolphins kicker Ray Finkel, it seems that she was trying to give him a big hint that Finkel had assumed Einhorn's identity. On the desk to the side, someone, presumably Einhorn, has arranged a banana and two apples in the shape of a penis and testicles to give the game away. It's not the most subtle clue, but looking back at the movie on a second go round, we all really should have noticed it. And there you have it folks, 10 movie secrets everyone missed the first time around. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and give me a follow on Twitter at you. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.